It's Platt, and today we kick it old school. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is Mickey's Malt Liquor. Um, if you've been a beer drinker for any amount of time, I'm sure at some point in time you've gone through a malt liquor phase, whether it's your underage days where that's what your older brother bought or somebody could get you, or if you're like me, a broke college student and that's what you could afford, or maybe also too, you know, at a certain point in life you're introduced to hip hop. I know, again, the late 80s, early 90s, hip hop and malt liquor, you know, work together. And uh, again, I, I think if you drink enough beer, at some point in time, you've kind of gone through a malt liquor phase. One of, one of the most popular malt liquors is, of course, Mickey's. Uh, a little background into Mickey's. Mickey's was uh, first created in 1962 by uh, Sterling Brewing. Uh, Sterling was based in Evansville, Indiana, and um, they produced Mickey's there from 1962 to 1972. Now, Sterling Brewing, or the actual brewery itself, had a lot longer history. Uh, the original brewery was built in 1880 and known as the Fulton Avenue Brewery. Uh, and it stayed that way until 1920 when the name was changed to Sterling. Now, Sterling stayed in business till 1972. 1972, a company called G. Heilman came in and uh, purchased a brand. Now, if that name sounds familiar, you might remember G. Heilman from the uh, Lone Star Beer video. I did a while back. Uh, G. Heilman, again, the name doesn't roll off the tongue, but has played a major part in the uh, history of American brewing and owned a lot of the classic brands. Uh, Paps, Lone Star, Carling, Rainier, Blatt's, Old Style, and in 1972, they purchased Mickey's. Uh, again, these brands, maybe not as well known today, but... 30, 40, 50 plus years ago. These were huge national and regional brands. Um, again, they were the predecessors uh, post-Prohibition. They, they want, got us from Prohibition to eventually the craft beer revolution. And G. Heilman owned a lot of these brands. And a really cool story uh, if you like doing a little more research on that. Now today... Mickey's is owned and produced by Miller Brewing, part of the uh, Molson Coors Worldwide Beverage Conglomerate. It's part of their uh, uh, brands. Um, and this would also include Ice House, which we talked about, and some of those other brands, Steel Reserve, what have you, all fall under uh, this corporate umbrella. Now, Mickey's was known for the classic 12-ounce um, Hand, called hand grenades or grenades. They looked, they're green. They had the shape of a hand grenade. They also had the wide mouth, which is another selling point. It was easier to chug. You didn't get all the glugging or whatever. Uh, again, that was a selling point to a uh, college kid, let me tell you. Uh, they also sell uh, Mickey's in 16 and 24 ounce cans. That's what this one is. And of course, 32 ounce and 40 ounce bottles. Now, I did a little research, and I couldn't find it, but it, I remember when I was in college, they did sell 64 ounces. There was a uh, rap song at the time that had the line, 64, we'll get you more, and they were damn right on that one. Uh, I think I remember paying like $225, $250 for the 64 ounce. So for five bucks, you could have a big evening. Trust me, I had a few of those. Um, they also produce nowadays, they also produce Mickey's Ice, which I find kind of interesting because regular Mickey's is 5.6% ABV and Mickey's Ice is 5.8. So it's only two tenths difference, which when we talked about at Ice House, the ice beers, you know, took the standard beer formula. They took it through the ice process and you were taking a standard American light lager, your, your Bud, you know, think of like Bud Ice or Molson Ice or whatever. You're taking a beer that's normally low to mid fours and through the ice process getting to the mid to upper five. So you had a little decent gap there in ABV and probably again because you're taking the water out, you probably really affected the body and then even like the flavor some. Two tenths, I just, I can't imagine somebody's like, oh, Mickey's ice, well that's so much better than Mickey's. Or I, I find that interesting. Uh, I would love to talk to the product development guy, you know, what you like, Steel Reserve, I believe, or uh, no, Ice House, you know, they had their, 
ice house and they had their ice house edge, there was like a 3% difference or 2.5% difference in those beers. Um, like I said, interesting to, I, I just found that interesting that they created something that was basically the same thing. Now, one thing about being a malt liquor, um, the marketing is a little different. You're not buying Super Bowl ads and what have you, but Mickey's was an early uh, sponsor of the UFC. They, they used to be on the, on the mat. Um, they, at the time, used a slogan called Get Stung, which kind of, you know, or, you know, sting the guy. Uh, kind of worked out. I know for a while they were doing a deal where they had fighters pictures on 24 ounce cans. So maybe somewhere out there is a Chuck Liddell or a Forrest Griffin 24 ounce Mickey's. I would love to see a picture of that. Some, if one of you have got one out there, post it on uh, in the comments or something because I think we all would love to see that. Uh, one other thing that kind of made me chuckle on the can it says fine malt liquor. Now some people say, well, that's kind of an oxymor oxymoron. Um, I kind of question, is there a fine malt liquor? Well, I'm doing a little research. I, I seen where the guys at Dogfish Head did produce a malt liquor, and we know those guys would take the project seriously, and they probably wouldn't use the adjuncts, per se, that get used in regular malt liquor. Uh, I know Mickey's uses corn syrup. Most of them use some kind of either corn syrup or rice as a you know adjunct, but um, I, I like I said, I got a feeling the guys at Dogfish Head uh, did a little different. Uh, also, in my research, though, I did find out that Mickey's has actually won gold at the Great American Beer Festival. I believe two years in a row, back in the early 2000s, they won uh, gold for the American Specialty Lager. So, maybe it is fine malt liquor. Well, before we try this beer, though, let's check out the stats. So, today I thought I'd talk about a little bit of pop culture and malt liquor. Actually, Pop culture, not mixed with malt liquor, but kind of an urban legend or whatever. And we want to talk about Brass Monkey. A lot of y'all, especially if you're in your 40s, a little bit older, you would know the old Beastie Boy song, Brass Monkey. It came out on the License to Ill album. I want to say that was like 1986-ish or whatever. And it was one of their hit songs, Brass Monkey. And I, like a lot of people, thought they were referring to a malt liquor based drink called Brass Monkey where basically you would take a few swigs out of your 40 ouncer and then float a little OJ. Poor man's mimosa, I guess is the best way to describe it. That's what I always thought the ly lyrics were referring to and most people always thought that. Uh, I know in the song they referenced a 40 ounce and so people just took the next step like, all right, Brass Monkey must be the malt liquor based drink. However, uh, Mike D came out later in an interview and said that that was not the case, that this was not about malt liquor, but actually a canned cocktail at the time, uh, a company called Hublin Company, based out of Connecticut, was selling a kind of a precursor to the modern day canned cocktails. You know, now you can get a Moscow Mule in a can, and Jim Beam and Jack Daniels have had their canned cocktail lines for a little while. But this is kind of a predecessor sold back between the 70s and the, the, the 90s. Uh, the cocktail itself, supposedly there is a cocktail named Brass Monkey, basically was a screwdriver with the addition of dark rum. Now, if you remember my cocktail special I did back around Super Bowl time or New Year, something like that, um, the uh, I, I started with a base of screwdriver and had all the variations. And I've, I've made all kinds of variations off that screwdriver and I've never heard of the Brass Monkey or you made that drink, but apparently that is a thing, and they were selling this in cans, and that's what the Beasties were referring to. So I always thought that was kind of neat, because again, for years, I was like a lot of people, they must be referring to the malt liquor drink, but they were not. So uh, malt liquor, again, didn't play a pop, part of pop culture, but a lot of people thought they did. Kind of urban legend, who, know, who knows. Well, enough about Brass Monkey. Let's drink some malt liquor. All right, plenty of bubbles. We got a nice golden color. Um, this looks like a respectable beer. Uh, about a, not quite a finger, very white foam. Oh, I can smell the adjuncts in that. Let's give her a try. You know what, that's actually fairly reasonable. 
Um, that actually goes down smoother than I remember. Um, maybe it's because back in the day when I drank malt liquor in college, a lot of times you bought it at the store, you drug it to a party, it kind of got a little warmer and it kind of got... And, and the can is better than the the glass bottles because you sometimes, we, you know, malt liquor is generally sold in clear glass bottles. And we've talked about uh, this in previous videos that the clear glass can kind of help skunk up a beer. So you kind of had a skunkier aftertaste. But this in the can tastes pretty reasonable. Yeah, that actually goes down fairly nice. Um... It does have a little bit more body than your generic premium American Lager, your Buds, Miller High Life, stuff like that. Um, no hops. You're not getting any hops in a beer like this. Um, but goes down fairly easy. You know, there's this really kind of fits in with those American Premium Lager beers in the sense that there's not a real aftertaste. It goes down easy. It's easy drinking. Plenty of carbonation. Um, yeah, actually just a nice functional little regular guy beer. This is a regular guy beer. And I get a little more alcohol in it. So in Mickey's, we might have to revisit Mickey's. Yeah, that's bad. I'm, to be honest, I'm really surprised how reasonable that is. And maybe it's just the fact that this is probably the first time I've ever drank Mickey's out of a can. Again, I was always... Old school 40 ounce bottles or the old 64s and this that, and the other, but actually this is a pretty reasonable beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.